this is your brain on kids. (laughs) (laughs) Or at least it was my brain on kids. This is like the absolute definition of chaos. Uh, If this resonates with you, then you're definitely going to watch today's video and stick around because I've got a guest today and we're going to be talking about how to go from your brain feeling like this, how to go from your life feeling like this, having zero time for yourself, constantly going from one thing to the next, the next, uh, putting yourself last on the to-do list, and then just congratulating yourself that you got to the end of the day. Um, If that feels like you, you are not alone. We're going to be talking about how to deal with that chaos and not just how to like get out of the overwhelm or how to get some more time for yourself. But I'm going to be talking with one mama today who's going to share her journey of how she went from this being her life. Um, Actually, she told me that there needed to be like another line somewhere with an extra little squiggle. Um, But otherwise, it's a pretty good replica of her life and what her day-to-day looked like. And she went from this to this nice organized day-to-day where she actually has time, not just for her family, not just for herself, but also for her passions and her dreams. So we're going to be talking about that today. Let me invite my guest on today. Hello, it's the one and only Kylie. Hello, Kylie. How are you? Good. I think I've awesome. unmuted myself. Now. Yay! I love it. Okay, <laughs> awesome. I was more like wondering if I was going to forget to unmute, and I did. Uh, so, um, so when I showed you this picture, I said, "Hey, Kylie, is this accurate?" Uh, you said yes, but you said I kind of got it a little wrong. What did I get wrong? Yeah, you needed another little squiggle. Okay. Well, I think if I had to, if I followed those lines, you wouldn't get an eighth squiggle at all. And then they're okay. not a ninth and not a tenth. It would have to be 10 squiggly lines tangled okay. up together. Okay. All right. So for everyone who doesn't know who you are, can you share a little bit about yourself and your family? Yeah. Look, I'm married to, um, he's an IT specialist, which is a little bit of an um, uh, inaccuracy seems because he's very much my husband and out of the box thinker and he always has been him and his chickens and his um gardening and um so i'm also the because probably uh in part because of that i have eight very creative kids and they're a mix of unique if you know anything about um you know behavioral types and fierce kiddos and there's a there's a mostly unique and then some fierce running in there that confused me completely i mm. i was a unique um, i'm a unique person um sensitive and and it's not that they're not sensitive but they just have this fierceness that i i didn't know what to do with um so he visited my house that even you know uh, before this this time uh it would have it would have looked like a bunch of interrupted conversations a lot of yeah, a lot like that. Entertaining stories, um, kids running about, jumping on furniture, which didn't look like much on the outside, but on the inside, it was like, what do I do here? What do I do? Because it was enough kids to fill every piece of furniture in the house, in the mm-hmm. room, in the room. So it was always very crowded. I yeah. know that's why I said to put another because it was, and 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 that's how it felt like. Like that was that was my brain. It was very crowded. And I you described it as chaos yes. before you came yes. to call it chaos, right? Yes. So exactly, so you kind of like lived and breathed this idea of chaos uh, in your family, and you yes. talked about how like you even lived and breathed this idea of chaos like in your own head. Can you tell me what that meant? Like, what do you mean by even your own head felt like chaos? Yeah, because the thing is, um, is that I came from a family of seven children. I was the eldest um, daughter of seven. So I had grown up with this, like it was part of me, an ingrained part of my brain. Um, and and then when you're, you know, it's a little like your heart, you know, when you have a new child, you have that second child and you wonder how are you going to love how are you going to love the second child as much as you love the first one? Like I had that feeling. It was not just love. It was just how am I going to hold you in mind? How am I going to how am I going to remember you exist? I, I know when I came home with my fourth, 
that I couldn't count to four. That's how I described it. Like I couldn't count to, okay, they're all safe. There's four safe around me. And I went back inside the first time we went out with four children because I said to Edwin, I cannot, I actually can't count to four. This is too much for me. I don't have enough hands. We don't have enough. I need two hands to carry a baby and three are running around on their own feet. It's just too much. And then you had four more. And then I had four more on top of that. <laughs> okay. How, how, you, how do you begin to unpack? and un- So as you can see, I don't even understand my own brain. Like I don't even know how that happened exactly, but this is the way my life unfolded in a very chaotic way. <laughs> very chaotic. So you just thought it had to be this way. Well, it was part of life. I loved I loved the kids and they kind of, um, they completed me and dismantled me at the same, at the same time. time. <laughs> yeah, it's like that <laughs> yin and yang, right? Yes. Um, so, yes. so Kylie, what, um, was there like a breaking point that you knew something had to be different? I, I know, I know this is going to sound like, it took a darn long time, but I mean, I did have eight kids, so it must have taken a long time. But when when I had my eighth and I had her um, and I went home and she was so little, like, like I was really trying to focus in on her, but she from the beginning was a very, she felt her own needs and when they weren't being met she was quick to demonstrate you know her messiness when <laughs> when i came to um ctc was uh, uh, uh ev- evident it was evident that this is what she did so that uh, i had a call from the hospital to say look we've looked and she's so joined us you have to come back we have to put her back under the blue light and I remember thinking in that moment, how how could I, when I was sent home, they instructed me after this baby became very energetic after being under the blue light, um, that I needed to feed her more frequently. And I could not imagine like feeding this baby and meeting this baby's needs amongst all the other children. Um, so, yeah, it, it definitely got to the point with Gracie that not because of Gracie, because Gracie was um, quite self-sufficient, really. Anyone, she she quickly learned um, to let people know if her needs weren't met. But it was just too much for, for me. It was like and, the last straw. It was like the straw yeah, that broke the mother's back. Yeah, it was. Back it was the last like... child that broke the mother's back. <laughs> <laughs> broke the mother's back. Don't, don't step on the cracks. You'll break your mother's back. And then yeah. don't have that eighth child. I mean, do, because Gracie's amazing. Oh, she's amazing. Yeah, she's phenomenal. Right. Grace, yeah, Grace, Grace is amazing. Yeah, yeah, so, sure. so, Kylie, talk to me a little bit about how you were feeling, right? You talked to me about, like, broken conversations and... Uh, you know, demanding needs from everybody else. But what was the ripple effect for you? So what it meant was from the outside, everyone was saying that I obviously love children and that I obviously did a great job because these kids, they were unique, they were assertive, they were fantastic at school. Um, at home they were uh when nobody was watching, it was crazy. Like it felt crazy. That's what it felt like. So I looked like just like this buzzing bee going from flower to flower, kid to kid. Mm. That's what it looked like from the outside. Just On busy, inside, just constantly going. Busy, 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 busy. And everyone thought I was so efficient because I was so looking busy all the time. The kids looked like their kid, their, their needs were met, um, but I felt um, on the inside there was little bits of me that was breaking, you know, there was mm. one bit of me that said, you know, you have a PhD, why are you doing this? Mm. You know, I kicking and screaming like I wasn't doing anything with my, my inmost um, passions. Mm. And then there was another part of me that was like, you're just not good enough. Like each one of those mm. children, each one of the eight children deserves a much better mother than you are. Mm. For them, I could have been maybe for one, um, but even then, I remember thinking, even when I had my first, that I just wasn't good enough for what she, mm. what she deserved. Yeah. Um, so a lot of self doubt, and absolutely. I think anyone watching this can attest to that. Whether they have one kid, two kids, three kids, eight kids, right? Is that self doubt definitely creeps in? Um, yeah. Talk to me about uh, what did 
what did your time look like? Like I asked on the Facebook page the other day, like, how do you balance your time with your, you know, your kids and your family and your self care and your dreams? And everyone was like, um, you're joking, right? So I'm just curious with eight kids and feeling the self doubt, feeling like you were constantly busy. What did time look like for you? All right. Let me think about this because I had the whole spiel ready about how I had looked into parenting theories and everyone said that the the, the key was balance because if you mm. wanted a balanced, regulated child, a calm, regulated child, then for, therefore you just balanced out the child mm. and the parent needs and the child and the, the parent-led and you would be fine. But I had tried out that equation and it didn't work. Like mm-hmm. it really didn't. I tried even when I had one. And then when I had so many, it just seemed impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, so my time was like something that certainly didn't belong to me. It was being divided by each person in the equation and mine was the very last to get it at 11 p.m. at night. Mm. And literally that was my me time. And I would I would um, be proud of the fact that I got me time at 11 p.m. Mm-hmm. Um, and the rest of the time was just divided between the eight, literally. And it just is a testimony to the fact that balance is not the key. Life. Right. Balance isn't the key. So people are probably hearing, well, what, what is, what is the key? Like what's, you know, what is life? You know what? Let's go to this. What does yep. it look like now? If balance isn't the key, uh, let's talk about what does life look like now, now that you're not trying to balance, now that you're not trying to uh, be everything to everyone and be busy all the time. What, what does life look like now? It's like um, like now I have a sieve. I have the sieve and the sieve is the, it's not a it's not a scale. I don't have all the pieces and I balance them out. I mean that would require too many too much math and I don't have any math really. <laughs> um, I I can't divide like that. Like I was a kind of, you know, I, my idea of good, good mothering is that I would give the attention to my newborn and I couldn't even do that, undivided attention to my newborn. I could only do that and I would instruct my husband not to bring the children to visit me at the hospital for more than an hour at a time once over the three days because it would overwhelm me to have all the children in the one room for the first right. day of the, after the birth. Um, so it's a sieve and what I find is that as long as those three, like main three things that I've chosen as being central to what I want to be um, my my priorities for that year or that month or that week um, and it comes down to a day if I have that sieve to to you know get those three things that come to the top then all the other things kind of find their place because, after all, I'm not in charge. I can't mm. take hold of everybody. I can only take hold of myself and there's a power in having control of yourself because mm. that's been the biggest, biggest thing that I've had in, in all of this um, journey is that I can I can be an example. Mm. And if I can so- be, yeah. That, so yeah. it, this is this is like what it looks like more now is like sifting yes. Sorry, through yes. and saying, well, yes. I, I had to look up sieve because I didn't know what that was. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> it's, okay. it's like English. a funnel. It's a, it's a strainer, right? I, I thought strainer. I knew what it was. Okay. So I, for a minute, I thought that it was, uh, for some reason here, I'm going to come back to me for a second. I thought yes. this is just me being like so honest. I didn't know what you meant by sieve. And in my yes. head, I was picturing one of those like big things you wield in your hand that like 
it like almost looks like an axe and you go through like the cornfield and you, like, cut the weeds oh, that, with it. Yeah. <laughs> I really thought you were talking about really kind. I was like, to what chop is down that what you use? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like the tea strainer. Yeah, yeah, I know what it is now. That Um, that are left behind. I I actually, for anyone who's not sure, I actually went, I'll show you, I went and Googled it because I was. was. (laughs) For the flower. Yeah. So I figured it out. And then I write a flower. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. also it takes the pieces out of the tea. So you're left with the beautiful tea. Yeah. You know, so it's like it. your sifter, your sorter. It's yes. like, you know, you're you're really making sure, like I'm focusing on the things that are most important. I'm prioritizing because, yeah. you know, that is something that, that so many people try to do is they try to do it all, which is what you were trying to do. Yes. And they try to balance it all. And they try to keep all those things. Scythe. Yeah. <laughs> or scythe or whatever. <laughs> Sorry, Don, Delana just told me what I was thinking of. All right, yes. so they try to balance all these things, and it just, like you said, it doesn't work. So you're sifting. You're saying, okay, mm-hmm. what are my priorities? And and then you became a model with that, and that had this massive ripple effect in the rest of your family. And mm-hmm. so, like, what are what are you able to do now that you have this, like, sieve or sift or whatever you call it this strainer for your family um this priority like bucket um what would you like what have you been able to do what is that allowed for you and your family yeah well I mean now I have not only can I can I be a mum and part of the team just an ordinary member of the family like everyone else like that's what my my dream and my wish was and you really CT Dana you have granted me that wish seriously came with that wish that I just wanted to be part of the crowd honestly and I've never been part of the crowd because I've always been the older sister of many and I'd always been the mother of many and there wasn't a lot of time in between to be anything else so for me to be just part of the crowd having a laugh and one of the kids yeah. say, you know, I noticed that one of the children was walking around the hallway and you had already gone to bed last night. And it's like, oh, I didn't get all the kids into bed. Like, <laughs> they got themselves to bed after I went to sleep. Well, I wouldn't have laughed at that a few years back. I would have found <laughs> that personal and insulting. But I couldn't even do the job of putting my kids to bed. <laughs> But now my lit- one of my younger ones can say, well, you know, oh, okay. Oops, well, we God, thought- we forgot one of us. <laughs> we forgot one of you. But, you know, we fixed it. Don't worry, Mum. We put it to bed. It's okay. Okay. We All put right. it to bed. Um, yeah. So you get to be part of the team. I get to be uh, part of the team and I also get to do my, which I didn't ever think I'd be able to do, which is make use of um, my passion and bring it together because I was such an ambitious young person. I absolutely yeah. loved school and I always had a career plan. I was, and it went into my adult years, um, into my 40s. And yeah. I had a career, but never ever, you know, I was always rigging it and thinking, I'll go in the historic, I'll go in that one. But to be able to bring it all together, all the brain science and the child development, the play therapy and the psychology and the research and all of these bits and kind of put it into creative kids yoga. Um, and then to be doing this coaching um, with parents as well, um, yeah, is is been fantastic to make this room and air raid my life. That's what it did. <laughs> like really, I put, that's what the sieve done. Like if I had to do put another piece, like that's probably why I put it off for so long. If I had to put another piece on the scale to balance everything, I would have collapsed. Like yeah. Well, you were barely putting yourself on there and now you're putting yourself, you're putting your passion, you're putting your family, you know, yeah. and you got a little extra on the side to go to the beach, yeah. you know, like you've got some That's it. stuff going on. Yeah. And I'll still go to the beach. I, I yeah. don't go early in the morning because I kind of know that I've owned parts of my day where I've scheduled yeah. in what I'm going to well, do. Well, and you still have time to chase a bunny around your kitchen. That's it. And I yeah. still can do that. And I can still <laughs> say, oh, look for this half an hour, you know, 
you were a little bit late to this interview. So I just allocated half an hour to doing, I had to choose what I wanted to do in my half an hour. I had extra. Um, So, and you know, there's tweaks along the way because the thing is, is that this week we had a bit of a a clash and it's like, mum, we don't know what you're doing. You've got so many bits. And so I had to, I had to make sure that my schedule was on the board so that everyone knows what they're doing. Okay. School's so, coming next week and holidays are this week. And- yeah. So talk to me. I mean, so we've got this. I'm going to yeah. come back here and I'm going to go yeah. to my doodles, right? Yeah. So we've got this like crazy chaotic life where you're, you've got a ton of self-doubt. There's broken yeah. conversations. Kids are busy going everywhere. You're trying to balance it all. You can't divide up the time. And you're feeling like a busy bee going from flower to flower. And now yes. you've got time. You've got space. You are able to be part of the team. You are able to focus on your passion and ambitions. And, you know, we all know this didn't happen overnight, right? But what's this journey to get here? Are there a few steps for someone who's listening, who is in this just overwhelmed, chaotic, if we were to put that picture back, right? Like this is where they're at right now. How do they go from this fully chaotic moment and life to having extra time to being able to put themselves on the to-do list to being there for their kids to having their kids like be able to solve problems on their own and actually have space and time for their own passions like are there a couple of steps that you could walk through or like key points in your journey that you could share with others Yeah, I think, well, where I started was to look after me. Like I really started with that. What would that Um, look like? Like what is the the you piece? The you piece that I started with was that I started with a routine that did not start at 11 p.m. That started in the morning Mm. or even the night before if you you don't have time. I'm just curious. We did an interview recently with Louie Lynn yes. and talked about the spark plan and she walked yes. people through that. Is that what you're talking about here? That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so that spark plan, you. was yes. that spark plan all at one time or did you kind of move that throughout the day because of your day? Yeah. Well, I did a lot of things. Um, I started off though with doing one minute of each piece. Mm. So I would do one minute of uh, shift, just new ideas, whatever, or swapping thoughts. I did one minute of just thinking, so what is it that I want to schedule as priority for the day? Mm -hmm. Um, That was just choosing a couple of things um, imperfectly. And A was activate any kind of movement Mm -hmm. at all. And R was any kind of restore. It could be a rest. It could be a sit down. It could have been yoga or or, um, meditation but just something small and connect was anything from Facebook to seeing somebody and at times I had to do two two times not just once in a day because I found that before bedtime I would Mm -hmm. be depleted and I needed energy at bedtime so it would re-energize me okay Um, yeah so I recharged the batteries in the afternoon and other times I've been happy to do overlapping bits um, where I'm, you know, maybe doing the, rest- I don't know if it's restore. Um, I could be doing connect and activate yeah. at the same time, be walking and talking to my mum or whatever. Yeah. But I did lots of that and I I would tick it off as done if it was half a minute, honestly. Yeah. Anything, anything. So I started, that was my big move. And this was big for me because... I came to it with an exhaustion and thinking, do you know what? There's nothing wrong with me here. The kids are the thing that's the problem. <laughs> so I I'm say that. <laughs> I'm tired of doing the work on me. I'll work on the kids. And that's how I came to it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was a little shift to that, but it was self-care. Like this is not work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No work fits that routine. It's yeah. all about what I need and yeah. listening yeah. to what I need. So once you got that kind of in place and you were giving yourself that like five minutes of permission a day, 
what was the next kind of step you went through? And I can't miss the piece like, okay, one minute because I have to conceptualise for a minute. So there's three pieces that I see. One is that you've got this routine that you start for yourself that's small, easy, and you can congratulate yourself for doing it. And on the other end that I had, I I was able to dream again and think about mm-hmm. me as having a passion and I can pursue it. In between what happened is really about struggles to superpowers. Mm. Like that was big for me because I could see that we were struggling. I didn't see what I could do about that as I am. Mm. Like come as you are and do your routine, but then how could I make the transformation to be able to conquer those struggles? Well, dig deeper into the struggle. And there you'll find the superpower. So now, can you talk about that just a little bit? Because not everyone here is familiar with struggles to superpowers. Can you talk just a little bit? um, If you feel comfortable, because I know this is a little vulnerable to be honest about this, but I mean, you felt like you had a lot of struggles that would get in your way um, based on you use, I mean, you use, is it okay if I say what you used to describe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you used to describe yourself, like when you first came to us, as having monkey brain, yes. right? And you used to kind of beat yourself up for being scattered and that sort of thing. Can you talk a little bit about what it means to look at your struggles to superpowers and identify those? Yeah, I think the biggest, the, the, hmm. because I was looking for my spark, right, initially. So it came, you know, the kicking and screaming um, person inside of me that really wanted to do the get to my passion, you know, there was a drive there. Like that was what was driving me. But then I got to this point where I had found something I was really interested in, but what's really my struggle? And and I, and I realised that I'd never realised before that it was my executive functioning. Mm-hmm. That, that it was this monkey brain. And how could I meet this? Well, what I did was that I thought, what am I good at in this? In doing this, um, what is it that's good about my brain? And, and for me, a huge thing was that I realised that I hyper-focus very well. Mm -hmm. Because what I used to do to actually cope with all the noise and everything that was going on when I was young is my sister would point it out to me that I would just take off. Like she would know that I'm not there anymore, Mm -hmm. that I would float off. My attention would go and I'd lose what was happening at the time and I'd be somewhere else kind of uh, uh, escaping from Mm -hmm. the chaos And, and then not hear what was said. So it would then be an impediment to my memory of whatever was going on and I wouldn't be able to, um, you know, uh, respond very well because I wasn't taking off everything that was happening. But I realised that to hyper-focus is a superpower. Mm -hmm. So if I could focus on one thing, hyper-focus on one thing, then I could, and that's why the three rocks worked very well. So that's what I mean by digging into it until there's Mm -hmm. something but how can I use this? Mm -hmm. And that's why it's kind of like why you trying to divide your time between eight kids didn't work because you were trying to hyper-focus on all eight kids. Exactly. When you hyper-focused on, like we were trying to focus on all and you couldn't, but when you were able to focus on, okay, this kid needs this today, I need this today, and my husband needs this today, And the rest of you guys, you'll be okay today. And then tomorrow we'll focus on something else. Um, Is that kind of what, like, I'm just trying to put it into a perspective for others who are listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not um, articulating it very well, but. No, you're um, doing a great job. I just wanted to bring it back. That part of it. it, Yeah. This is a hard part because I'm really digging into what I struggle with. And it's hard to say that my struggle is my strength. Um, but that's what it is exactly. I was trying to use my hyper focus to focus on everyone. So yeah. I was using like a multi, multi focus. And yeah. 
And really my strength is, is that I can hyper-focus. So, in fact, I started to see the evidence before my eyes because I uh -huh. hyper-focused on Gracie yeah. and all this happened. So she had a, had a mess. You told me, focus on her. And I thought you were you you were not very helpful in saying that. <laughs> but once I started to do it, I saw. And what I thought in preparing for this interview, that my biggest takeaway out of all of it, apart from the fact that we work as a team, um, that my my team makes allowances for my passion and they know exactly what my dream is and they allow for that, um, is that my my teens, I've never had to actually teach them the CTC way. My the hardest one, the one that lived all her life with a with a woman who was quite, with a mother who was quite confused about what her parenting model was, has been able to adopt naturally um, this framework because she sees me putting into action, and then she puts it into action even better than I do. Yeah, I so I think that's amazing that I look at my teens and I say, you know, the people that they're becoming and I say becoming because I don't know exactly what they're going to be, but I can see that they're implementing at school, they're implementing at work, not in any explicit way, but they're doing it. I can yeah. see they're doing it. They're that's getting awesome. from with others. They're connecting with them. They're constantly advocating for themselves and for other people. Mm -hmm. They're integrating that into their work as creative beings in all different areas and I'm just I'm so proud of them being CTC beings because I allowed myself inside to be CTC from yeah. really from my heart and not from any kind of perfect plan family plan that I have because I'm I'm not the kind of person that you I'm going to get out my folder with all the plans you know I've I've never really had a lot of written down plans but I live it with my heart because I know yeah. it works for me personally and then I can give it to my children. Is That's yeah. amazing. And that, and there was one other step. So, like, I love what this has made possible for you, for your family and, you know, and, and even for your passions. And so, you know, the, the last piece is you said that you started to, like, dream again and you started to create space in your week. So... Can you talk to me just a little bit for others, right? Like you've got the you piece with the spark. You've got the, because you kind of fast forwarded to it, but you picked over it so fast. I didn't get to write down the third stage of the the dreaming part. So yes. you did you did the the self-care. You did the struggles to superpower. And then what, what was the thing that you did? Like at, what was the last piece, the yes. last stage? I think it kind of it relates to the fact that once I accepted myself, it gave me enough fuel then because mm -hmm. I I met my own needs. I mean, okay. remember, it's yoga at the end of the day. So I, I used yoga and I knew I had a passion for yoga and interest and it met my needs. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to the second stage, I realised about these struggles to superpowers and how important that is to feed creativity, you know, if people... Uh, need that to to live and to be happy then that was important so when I got to the third step it was like well I can do this in an imperfect way and see what happens mm -hmm. like the, because of the imperfect action that I took um in dreaming so I, I I dreamt it I allowed myself to dream it and then when I allowed myself to take one little step and then another to, you know, to organise a 15-minute babysitter. Mm -hmm. And I organised for in that 15 minutes a week, the babysitter would come and I would sit down with my yoga and somehow think about what I was going to do next. Yeah, that's awesome. That's okay, mean. so you just start taking baby steps to start fitting it in instead of it having to be this big thing and yes. it have to take over everything. Instead, it's like, okay, how can I find 15 minutes? How can I make room? So I feel like this is like that making room piece for your dream. Um, and talk to me just a little bit, like you kind of have listed it off here and there, but yes. like, what do you have room for now? What, what are the things that you have room for? Um, as in, what do I actually do? Yeah, like what, what have you made space for? 
What are the things yeah. you do in your week now? So now, now um, that that's my dream. Like, is something that happens outside of me. Just, just it's not just a dream. It's act, in actuality. Like, it's it's uh -huh. reality. So, to, just to bring that, I wanted to point that out. That now it's a reality. I actually do it for fifteen minutes, and then I do it for one day a week. And so, I, because I was doing it, I was believing it that the yeah. dream was actual. It wasn't a dream that would stay up in the clouds forevermore, you know. Yeah. Um, but what I do is I I I work with 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 you in terms of the coaching and um yeah in, in CTC, but uh -huh. my major dream work is um, breathe creative yoga. Mm. And so I work with kids to create their own yoga and to um, you know, use their wiggly energy in this way and to also um, tap into this, um, the struggles of wiggling around, not fitting in, being told to sit still and use that as a superpower to create and get their brains moving. So I believe that if they're making their own yoga, if they're doing something with their physical energy that often the world thinks is something negative, that actually something positive can come because I have myself and also many of my children have used movement and through movement have, have made academic success possible. Um, so I, I have a passion for this. Yeah, um, I can see. And I'm moving on to... to oh. Actually, this is a secret. Okay. I'm going to go to tap classes. <laughs> I cannot imagine. I feel like you're going to come to a meeting fun. and you're going to be tabbing. <laughs> That's on top of it. Uh, okay. I don't know how it's going to happen yet, but there's a night. That's, there's I love it. Possible. I love it. I love it. That is so amazing. All right. So, so you've got your family and you've got you and now you've got a dream, you've got a job, you've got like all the stuff that you love and now you're adding in some hobbies. Like that is amazing. I love it so much. So for a lot of people, this might feel absolutely impossible, absolutely impossible, right? Like to go from complete chaos to living your dream, right? Like not actually just dreaming about it, but like literally living your dream and not having to choose between your family, you, or your dreams, but like, it's an and, not a either or. So what, what would you say to someone who's watching right now? And it feels like a complete, absolute impossibility because they're still stuck in that chaos every day. Yeah. I think, I think the thing for me was that if somebody had presented the the third step to me, I would have said, no way. Like, that's not possible. It's a nice dream, but that's it. I just keep it as a dream. Um, even if the second step was given to me, I probably wouldn't even have known what to do with it quite. But because it started with um, caring for myself because I needed it and and because this was my my gate to looking after my kids was to look after me, and I could clearly see this. Um, that was enough. Like, start with that. That even if you put five minutes to looking after you and know how beneficial that would be, not only for you at so many levels, but mm -hmm. for your kids, no matter what age they are, for a newborn. Like, even to feed my baby, like, I actually had to sit down. So it helped me to think that I'm sitting down while I'm feeding my baby. Like, mm -hmm. and so that's a win-win for both of us. Mm -hmm. And then, and to, you know, this bigger thing of you've got a woman in front of you who's now 21 and it's good for her to see me saying to one of her brothers and sisters, hey, you know, it's time to do the dishes. Why don't you pick up your dishes and put them in the sink? Well, that frees her up because she knows that when she gets married or or not or whatever situation she ends up um, living with other people, that she'll be asking somebody else to do something for her when she needs to. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like so, it's so to get, like just as a mother, I have a responsibility to my dream. 
So now I can see that connection, but just give me the bit where if I look after me, Mm -hmm. I'm looking after the one who's going to look after them. I love that. So even if someone doesn't see the possibility yet, they can't even imagine it. They don't even really believe it yet. You're saying take that first step and that first step is to take care of you. That's pretty phenomenal. That's like really amazing advice. I wish someone had given me that like eight years ago. Yes, <laughs> like, so why? Like maybe baby three. three, it would have been real useful. Yeah, actually. right? <laughs> oh my gosh, we're 16 years ago? Man. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would have been really nice. So that is that is really amazing. And so, you know, we do have our seven days to less chaos coming out. And you are a coach in our program now um, because you've allowed this time and space. And um, and so you'll be there during the seven day. And so normally I tell people why they should come to the seven day. What do you want to tell them about the seven days to less chaos? I'm a little biased, um, but <laughs> I have to say this is, this is such an opportunity. Like this is, this was my, it saved my life really. This this um, framework and support and community really saved my life and I, I can't, even if it were, even if it were for not getting the step to realising my passion, step three, do, um, having my dream, CT saved my life just to get me through step one, which is to realise that I needed to look after myself, to look after my kids, and that was manageable because it was about me. So it's, uh, it's saved my life. So I don't know how, how to tell you to grab the lifesaver when it's thrown out because you've got nothing to lose. There's nothing to lose. I, I, I think you're probably saving your life really in terms of... Um, yeah, just as a person, but also as a mum and my own kids' lives, because I can see that it's changed the trajectory mm. forever. Um, oh. So not to not to make it sound like the big look. We're there to take you through all the. Little I think stuff. someone is cutting and onions out there. Some fun. <laughs> What's wrong? I mean, I think someone's cutting onions in the kitchen. I'm not really <laughs> sure. <laughs> Oh, it's so lovely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but we're lovely. there to take you through the little steps. Seriously, it's not that, like, if it was that serious, I probably wouldn't have had much to do with it because I like a lot of fun and and jokes and, and stories, but also I like connection. Like, I'm a real people person. So this brings all those bits together. You'll find something. And quiet people and loud people, it doesn't matter because we have They're so not all many like people. us, right? <laughs> no, no, no. There are so many mediums. Like, I have seen so many people. And amongst our coaches is the different groups. You know, who you see at the front, who you see at the back and in the middle is completely different as well. So our team is filled with all different kinds of people and our communities are filled with all kinds of people, but that's the best place to find all the kinds and your kind. So, yeah. And so if anyone's watching this and you don't quite, like you can't grasp the idea of, you know, being able to live your dream, live your passions, uh, have time for yourself and all these other things, but you know you're living in chaos, then seven days to less chaos is for you. If you have a family team and you're starting to look at how do I help my kids advocate for each other? How do I help my kids? You know, how do I model for my kids so that when they're 21, I can feel like they're walking out into the world confidently, like Kylie talked about, then seven days for less chaos is for you. So if you need a plan to go from chaotic and, you know, busy, overwhelmed life to, having time and space and energy to do the things that matter most to you, then just put, I need a plan in the comments and we will make sure that we get you the link to seven days to less chaos. Um, And I just want you guys to give so much love to Kylie. I'm seeing some in the comments already of you're an inspiration. This is amazing. So, um, and the other thing is, Kylie, tell people where they can find you because I know that people are going to be curious. How do they help their kids 
come up with their own yoga. I am sure there are people here who have wiggly kids who could definitely use your help and your superpowers. So where do they, where do they learn more about that? Well, you can find me on Facebook and it's called Breathe Creative Yoga. Okay. I also have a public group where I share lots and lots of um, poses and, and tips and, and tricks. And that's um, called Easy Steps to Creative Yoga. Awesome. Um, but you can, you can, if you go to Breathe Creative Yoga, you'll get the link to the group. Okay, awesome. So Breathe Creative Yoga right here on Facebook. And Kylie, after we're done with this, can you go put that in the comments? Make sure that people have that tag it yes. so people can go follow you um, over there as well. So again, um, just, you know, let, uh, let us know in the comments, just say, I need a plan. If this is something that you need, we're going to be doing our seven days to less chaos soon. And, um, we'll be walking you through a plan for you, a plan for remaining calm, a plan for getting ahead of the chaos. And we'll be showing you the other plans that Kylie used to be able to create more time and energy, to be able to create a family team. Um, and even the Conquer and Thrive plan is one that we will kind of share with you and show what that looks like. So you'll definitely want to be there. Kaylee, is there anything I didn't ask you about or anything that's on your heart or mind that you want to share um, on top of all the amazingness you've already shared? <sighs> Just trying to think. Let me see. Oh, we've covered so much ground. I'm, we did. We I'm did cover a lot of ground. So just from your heart, is there anything that, you know, you want to want to say? I just want to welcome everybody to come um, because... You know, it just seems it just seems it seems like it was a lot of work, um, and I have to say that probably if you you know if I if I knew um, if I knew earlier that I think I got into it because it seemed so simple to come and listen, and if I thought that there was going to be many steps, I probably wouldn't have um, come. So I hope I didn't. Um, make it a you know sound like a big task because it's really not um the reason why you are having um some you know there might be something in your mind that's popping up that you know you can't make it because you're having a lot of time and well that's her and I don't function that way it really is that as important as that is to come because the reason why you don't you, um, you say you can't come is also the reason why you should because I wouldn't have come mainly because I would thought would have thought it was too complex. My fam didn't suit my family, and the other thing is is that I didn't have the time and I was too busy. I didn't have the energy, the emotional energy. Um, but really, the support in the group is so so great, and the the fact that you can. Um, you know, find what works for you as an individual family and as an individual person is the reason why you come. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What I wasn't going to come for has become the reason why I do come. So I know you have to trust us to some level, um, but I am a mum of eight and I've thought if in a day you think, oh, there's no other mum that's ever thought this, you're probably wrong because... I've probably thought it a few times this week, even though I am where I am. So I've I've had many moments this week when I've thought I can't do this, but then I've got the tool back the box to take um, to use, um, and this is what it gives me. It's not a perfect family at all, not perfection at all, but I I know where to go to find an answer. And I know where to go to get support. And I think that is worth its weight in gold, like to have that. Mm. Not alone, never alone. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Kylie. This has been absolutely amazing. I, I am inspired and I am taking notes. And I just think you are, you are such a, a, like such a force. I always enjoy having a chat with you and, hearing from you. So thank you so much for being vulnerable, for sharing your thoughts and your story with us. And 
Um, and I'm just so honored that you're part of our program and part of our coaching team now um, so that you can share this journey with others. So thank you. And thank you for talking to me because this then, you know, I changed my own story by telling the story to you. So mm -hmm. it certainly does a lot for me. Um, and then also for my kids to know, to change their story, just yeah. to have such an impact on me. The community at la has an impact, just their interest. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, thank you guys. And thank you, Kylie. And for anyone who's listening to this, who's feeling I'm not enough, I can't do this. I'm not made for this. Just know you're not alone and that you've got an army of people just waiting for you to reach out. Just put, I need a plan in the comments below. And one of my team members, maybe Kylie, will post the link to seven days to less chaos for you so that you can find your home. All right, guys, I will talk to you later. Have a great evening. Bye.